If you're a gardener who's never grown roses, you've probably been a little intimidated by some of the terminology and the things that you've heard. Well, they're not intimidating. So welcome to the wonderful world of roses. I always feel there's two kinds of gardeners out there. Those who have never grown roses because they were too scared to try, or maybe you had a bad rose, you didn't succeed, and you don't want to try it again. Well, here's the thing. I've grown thousands of roses during my lifetime, most of them sustainably. I give them no more care than any other plant in my garden, and I've had a wonderful success. I know lots of other people who've had as well. And also, when you're dealing with a company like Jackson & Perkins, they research roses from all over the globe. And the wonderful thing about that is you can buy them with confidence knowing you're going to get a really, really great rose. Now let's talk about those, some of those things that you've heard. And I know they're scary. There are the things you've talked about, like the hard, difficult pruning and the complicated feeding program. You really don't need those, okay? You need just basic plant care. Those complicated programs are for exhibitors. Exhibitors work hard. They're talented rose growers, but they're after one very specific thing, the long stem hybrid tea to exhibit in a rose show. You want a plant with lots of flowers that's gonna be beautiful, that's gonna be fragrant, and bloom from spring to fall. All the videos that we're doing for this series with Jackson and Perkins cover a lot more in detail, planting, watering, feeding, preparing the soil, and you're gonna see some of these products that you're gonna need in there, but we'll talk about those more specifically. But this video is to introduce you to roses. Now we're gonna get started by very simply talking about different kinds of roses. There's a lot of different kinds of roses out there. But we're going to cover six basic kinds of roses that you can use in your garden. And what's important is that you understand how they grow, because that's going to determine where you're going to use them and what you're going to buy. First are hybrid teas. Hybrid teas grow upright, five to six feet. They bear flowers at the ends of long stems, usually a single flower per stem. They're probably what you think of when you think of the classic florist rose. The next kind of floribundus. Floribundas are wonderful rounded bushes bearing flowers in clusters. Lots and lots of blooms. They're little bloom machines. Really wonderful for like mid-border. Next kind are shrub roses. They're exactly what they sound like. They're shrubs. They're just a bush with lots and lots of flowers on them. The heights can vary, so make sure you know what you're buying before you place your order for those kinds of roses. Next kind are ground covers. They're not true ground covers like a lawn or grass, but they tend to grow very low and spread. They're also good for growing over banks, spilling over walls, even in a hanging basket. Climbing roses. They can grow to great heights. In fact, climbers climb and ramblers ramble, and they can cover a house. So again, be aware of the size you're going to get, but climbing roses add vertical interest to any garden out there. The last kind are hedge roses, like the Jackson and Perkins Simplicity series. They're great for just that wonderful long hedge that bears flowers, very easy to grow. When you go to buy your roses, there's three things that I want you to think about. Number one, I want you to think about growth habit. That's how you buy a rose, just like any other plant. For example, if you're going to buy a foundation plant, you wouldn't pick a pansy because it has a nice little blue flower. No, you'd pick something that grows into more of a hedge. We just talked about the different ways roses grow, the different sizes and heights. So back of the border, you want a taller rose. Front of the border, maybe more of a ground cover kind of rose. Best way to do this is simply to go to jacksonandperkins.com, start browsing through their roses. They've got them grouped different ways. Start looking at the height and the size and the growth habit you want, then find the flower that you're looking for. And if you're really not sure which rose to buy, just contact Jackson and Perkins. They've got horticulturalists standing by. Next thing you're going to encounter are the two different ways roses are grown. They're grown basically as an own root rose or as a grafted or budded rose, which is just a form of grafting. From your standpoint, the difference is very simply that this rose, the own root rose, is the same below the ground as it is above the ground. The grafted rose is grafted onto an understock. The reason they do it this way is because some roses grow better grafted and some grow better on their own root. From your standpoint, it doesn't make any difference. Don't worry about it. Jackson Perkins continually does research to discover which ones grow better grafted and which ones grow better on root. So just buy the one that you want and don't worry about that because Jackson Perkins has done all the worrying for you. The last thing you're going to encounter is as a rose is sold either bare root or it's sold as a container plant. From your standpoint, either way, it's going to do fine. But here's just my advice to you. If you've got experience as a gardener, go with the bare root or the container. If you're a little inexperienced and a little new to gardening and a little intimidated by all of this, go with the container. It's an easier product to work with right out of the gate, but you're going to succeed with either one of them. 
The last thing I want to talk about in this video is what I call the anatomy of a rose, the different parts of the roses. You're going to hear these terms throughout the videos, books that you read, or whatever the case may be. So it helps to kind of know what some of these things mean. We're going to start with the butt eye. What is a butt eye? Very simply, on the cane, it's these swellings that you see here on the cane. This is where the new cane or new growth will come from. There also can be found at the base of a set of leaves. That's what the butt eye is. Now, one of the important things to understand about a butt eye is if this is the butt eye and it's right here, it's going to grow this way when I cut above it. It always grows in the direction it's facing. You can use this to manipulate the bush into growing the growth habit that you want, which is that nice rounded habit. So if this is the center of my plant, anytime I deadhead, which is cutting off an old flower, or I prune, or I trim, I go to a butt eye that faces away from the center of the plant. That way I know my growth is going to constantly go out to different parts of the plant. So that basically covers a butt eye. Another term you're going to hear a lot is bud union. What is a bud union? It's this part of the rose right there, this part that you can see. This is the rootstock of the shank. They took a piece of the rose they wanted, they budded it onto the rootstock right there, and this is where the rose then grow. The rootstock used to be here, they nipped it off. The term bud union is used quite often when it comes to planting. In the planting video, you'll hear me talk about bury the bud union below the soil. So this is the bud union. On an own root plant, while it technically doesn't have a bud union, it's just still the same part of the plant where the canes grow out of. So either where it's own root or whether it's grafted, when you hear me talk about bud union, this is the part of the plant that I'm talking about. Basil break is another term you're going to encounter. That's not to be confused with a buster break, which is a very different kind of thing. A basil break is very simply a new cane that grows from the base of the plant. You generally find these right after you prune because the act of pruning stimulates that new growth. This is great because that's part of the cycle of the rose. The new canes will replace the old canes and the newer, fresher canes are the ones that flower better. So if you see a basil break, time to celebrate. Have a basil party. You've probably heard of rose hips in reference to like rose hip tea, good source of vitamin C. In fact, little piece of trivia, rose hips were used by sailors way back when, when they had long sea voyages to prevent scurvy. But what is a rose hip? These are rose hips right here. They are simply nothing more than old flowers. This is where a bloom was. They're actually seed pods. Inside of these are actual rose seeds. So if you cut them open and planted them, you might or might not get something to grow, but it won't be the rose that you have here because they've been hybridized so much. So that's in essence what a rose hip is. My advice is towards the end of the season, leave them on the plant. That signifies to the plant that it's time to go dormant and go to sleep before winter comes. Plus, rose hips are an incredible food source for birds and other great beneficials for your garden. Another term you hear often in roses is five leaflet leaf set. What is that? Simply this. It's a set of leaves or a leaf set with five leaves. One, two, three, four, five, where it joins the base of the cane. This term is used in offense in reference to deadheading. Deadhead above a five leaflet leaf set. That's because that's where the growth is generally strong enough to support the next stem that's going to bear the next flower. So deadheading or cutting above a five leaflet leaf set is never a bad idea. I hope this video has taken some of the mystique out of growing roses. And I hope now as a gardener you understand they really are nothing more than flowering plants and that's all the attention and all the care that they need. I know you're probably going to have some more questions and pop over to Facebook on the Jackson and Perkins Facebook page. Horticulturists are standing by to answer your questions, give you tips, give you encouragement. Make sure to check out our other videos. And for Jackson and Perkins, this is Paul Zimmerman and thanks for spending time in the garden with us today.